Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to start looking at complex numbers. Okay, uh, we'll also see actually ideas of angles. Uh, what is an angle? Uh, radians, and then we'll start looking at sinusoidal functions also. But one of the important ingredients of all of this is complex numbers and complex numbers and sinusoids and all of these things are related in one very intimate, uh, important fashion. And uh, we will explore all of that beginning this lecture. So let's get first started with complex numbers. So the idea of complex numbers needs a little bit of introduction. So a lot of people are happy with real numbers, maybe because it's called real. They think uh, they know real numbers, they see that in practice, they think you know the usual measurements we do physically are all real numbers. Complex numbers seems to be a bit uh, imaginary and odd and different and all that. So it needs a little bit of introduction where it comes from. I want to show you how complex numbers are nothing extraordinary, they're just numbers. You can add, you can multiply, you can divide, you can subtract, you can work with them just like you work with numbers and they're also very useful. Uh, maybe I'll demonstrate that to you later on. Uh, it's very useful in practice in various modelings and all of that over one can do. Okay, so let's get started uh, with complex numbers. So how did it start? How did the notion of uh, complex numbers start? All of you might have seen it before. Complex numbers start introducing square roots for negative numbers. Okay, so normally when we do square roots, we don't do square roots for negative numbers, right? So you have root of 25, you say 5 or maybe even minus 5 sometimes. But then root of minus 25, you don't want to say anything because there's no number which can square to give you something negative. Okay, if it's a positive number, if you square it, you get positive. If it's a negative number, you square it, you get positive again. So you can't get a negative number. So we don't associate anything meaningful to square root of negative number. The idea of complex numbers is to start by using square root of negative numbers. So how did this start? Where did this start from? It, it starts sort, sort of in the 1500s. At uh, that time, it was non-trivial to solve polynomial equations. So like for instance, uh, this kind of you know cube cubic equation or you know power phi equation there were even contests you know somebody would give you an equation and if you solve them uh, you find the roots you got money you know so it, it was very very important that you had efficient methods for solving equations like this so here is one equation uh, maybe this is not a very complicated one but you know there, there can be very more much many more complicated ones than this so here's the equation x cube minus 15 x minus 4 equals 0 so you have to find a root of this okay so, uh, ma ma mathematician, Italian mathematician Cardano came up with this uh, very clever method to find roots for such equations, right? For quadratic, we know how to find equa roots. There is a formula for it, a simple method. What is the equivalent for cubic polynomials? Okay, so here is the method, it's a very, very clever method. You substitute x equals u plus v, okay? I mean, already there's one variable you're not able to solve. I'm trying to introduce another variable here. It looks like a bad idea, but it turns out because you introduced another variable, you can solve this equation very, very smartly, okay? So notice what happens here. So you put x equals u plus v, u plus v whole cube is u cube plus v cube plus 3uv into u plus v, okay? So that's one of the formulas for u plus v whole cube. So that you can see, you know, 3uv into u is 3u square v, 3uv into v is 3uv squared. And then minus 15x is always there. So minus 15 into u plus v minus 4 equals 0. Now, uh, Cardano started this equation, started start this equation and then found out that this can be solved very nicely, okay, by enforcing 3uv equals 15. So, once I enforce 3uv equals 15, this thing goes away, right? I have gotten rid of this equation, okay? And then I am left only with u cube plus v cube equals 4. So, instead of struggling with one equation like this, I get two equations but then these equations can be easily solved, okay? So that was the brilliance of uh, Cartano. He came up with a very clever idea to solve this type of cubic equations. Now, why is this equation solvable? It's quite easily solvable. So you, you have to put, you know, this is a very standard method. Uh, you put u equals, uh, you know, 5 by, so 3 and 15 will cancel, you'll get 5. u equals 5 by v. So if you put 5 by, I mean, sorry, v equals 5 by u, you put 5 by u here, you'll get u power 6 minus 4 u cube plus 125. So it's a very easy, so you just use this here and you get one equation. So now this equation uh, looks like 6 power but it's actually only a quadratic, right? So you see this is a quadratic in u power 3. So he came up with the solution but here is what something happened. Here is, here is where something strange happened. So this quadratic does not have uh, proper roots, right? It has square root of 
minus 484. This b square minus 4ac if you do here, okay, b square is your 16, 4ac is like minus 4 into 125 minus 500, 16 minus 500 is minus 484. So, here you get stuck, okay. So, you think I can't solve this and you give up. But what Cardona did is he didn't stop, he didn't stop here. He said, you know what, let me imagine that this root of minus 484 is okay and I have a solution here, okay. So, he went ahead and tried to simplify like for instance, you know, 2 will cancel with 2, 4 here, 484, you can pull a 4 out and then you will get a, you know, 121 which is root 11. So, he just simplified this using just basic algebra without worrying about this root of minus 1, you know, it was a little bit surprising, I do not know what to do, but you just leave it there, keep it there, do not worry about it. So, you get 2 plus or minus 11 root minus 1, okay. Here is what uh, Cardona did was even more surprising. He observed that this can be solved by u equals 2 plus root of minus 1, okay. I want you to test this, uh, do it as an exercise. You take 2 plus root of minus 1 raised to the power 3 and you use a plus b power 3 formula and you substitute all of that. Uh, you will see you will get 2 plus or minus 2 plus 11 root of minus 1. So, you put u here and then you see he saw uv equals 5. So, v becomes 2 minus root of minus 1. You can check here, right, u times v, u times v will become 5, right, a plus b into a minus b. For a minute, just assume that this root of minus 1 is there, right, do not worry about it. So, then you get 4 minus of minus 1 and that is 5, uv equals 5 and u power 3 is 2 plus 11 root minus 1, v power 3 is 2 minus 11 root minus 1. So, you add these two, this 11 root minus 1 goes away and you get uh, 4 by magic. And notice that is what is brilliant about this method. Even though you had to invent a square root of a negative number in the middle, finally you got a real number as the answer, right. The root is u plus v equals 4. You can check that 4 is a root here, 64 minus 60 minus 4 is 0, uh, 4 is easy enough. Maybe this problem is very easy, but what you found in the way is if you pretend that this root of minus 1 is okay, you have something here and work with it you can solve real problems. This is an actual problem involving real numbers and integers and you want to find a solution and you can find a solution by using this trick of root of minus 1. So, this is how uh, complex numbers originated, okay. This is the origins, but then uh, like I said, i equals root of minus 1 was introduced as an imaginary number for solving very real problems, okay. And today I can tell you complex numbers are used so extensively in science, engineering, all over the place in practice, people are so comfortable with using uh, complex numbers. But this is the way uh, in which it originated, okay. So, a uh, little bit of philosophy here, you know, I mean, just one slide on the philosophy of what are numbers. I mean, we, we always think of numbers in a physical way that they have to represent some physical quantity. If you think that, then these numbers like i are surprising to you. What is this i, you know, I mean, it is root of minus 1, it is not going to represent a physical quantity, right. But that is not the meaning of it. The numbers also have an algebraic way of developing themselves, right. For instance, uh, you anytime you can add, subtract, multiply, divide, you have set of numbers. So, here is what happens, you know, historically, if you just look at how numbers evolved, initially you had the natural numbers 1, 2, 3, let us say, so on and then uh, 0 got added and then negative numbers got added, right. So, for a long time, uh, people were not comfortable with negative numbers. Today, we accept negative numbers as totally real, but uh, negative numbers was not accepted even by like, you know, very late uh, negative numbers where uh, people were not very comfortable with using them. Today, we use them very, very commonly. So, we got integers, 0, positive, negative, and then p by q came along. p by q, a lot of people liked. So, you made it rationals, and then irrationals came along, root 2, pi, e, all sorts of things. Then, we got real numbers, and then you added root of minus 1, to the real numbers to get complex numbers. So, there are many other branches like this actually, if you study theoretical uh, you know, number, number fields and things like that. So, so many other uh, branches that are possible here, but this branch is the most important and interesting branch in applications, okay. So, you see here anytime we made new and new numbers, we could do more and more interesting operations. You know, when you had integers, you could not divide properly, you used rational numbers, then you got rationals. And then you could not take limits properly, right. So, you, you, you got like things like, uh, you know, you could not have a number which squared to 2, etc. Then you had to take limits. When you took limits, you got irrational numbers and real numbers came along. And then here, uh, some, some numbers did not have square root, okay. It was still a problem and so you introduce this root of minus 1 and then that seems to solve a whole bunch of problems. So, you, you just algebraically keep developing these numbers 
and as you develop these numbers applications also follow okay so algebraically created complex numbers have found huge number of applications in science and engineering not only that they have improved our understanding of the physical world things like quantum mechanics for instance uses a lot of complex arithmetic okay so a lot of num lot of ideas very foundational ideas are based on complex numbers okay so don't be so surprised and worried about this what is this root of minus 1 what does it physically mean think of it as an algebraically created number for helping you with manipulations and eventually it has applications everywhere okay so let's move on so here is the proper official sort of definition for complex numbers the set of complex numbers we'll denote them c with this sort of script like notation it's defined as c equals x plus y i okay this i will be floating around you can't uh, leave the i out and x and y are real numbers so you have two real numbers and they are joined together using i in this fashion x plus y i okay plus is the regular like addition symbol and y i okay and this i will keep floating around what is this i i square is minus 1 i is square root of minus 1 okay that's all don't don't worry about what i is itself but i square is minus 1 this we are comfortable with okay so this is x plus y i so these are all the complex numbers okay, here are some examples you know 1 plus 2 i minus 4 plus root 2 i pi i and then 10 okay so any real number if you put y equals 0 so this goes away right so treat of treat i like a variable you know okay so 0 if this goes away 0 into i will be 0 so x is real by itself right so real numbers are also inside the complex numbers the complex numbers are definitely much much bigger than the um, I mean, sorry, much bigger bigger than the real numbers okay so another easy way to sort of in words define this is a complex number is an ordered pair of real numbers okay ordered pair meaning x and y there are two real numbers x y pair of real numbers but the ordering matters because with only one i am touching a y right so 1 plus 2 i is different from 2 plus i okay so those two are different so the ordering matters uh, but so so the complex numbers can also be thought of as a ordered pair of real numbers but it's not just a pair it's this x plus y i form uh, makes it very very important okay a bunch of definitions around it before that i already observed that the real numbers are contained in the complex numbers so complex numbers are bigger set than the real numbers okay so z equals x plus i y so the z is a very common variable in the complex uh, number area so z equals let's say you start with z z equals x plus y i belonging to c uh, x is the real part of z or z or z right so we can also say z x is the real part of z we usually denote it as x equals re of z y is the imaginary part of z we usually denote it as y equals i m of z okay so you have re of z which is a real number i m of z it's a real number okay so these two are important to know the real part imaginary part real part imaginary part so complex number has both parts this i equals root of minus 1 is treated like a variable in a polynomial so you have to think of the z as like a polynomial in i degree 1 polynomial right x plus y i and it satisfies i square equals minus 1 okay so that's all there is to it okay so this is the numbers uh, we'll work with these in very interesting ways the arithmetic is very very simple and interesting you might have seen it before i'll just quickly see it uh, here also okay so so that's the end of the introduction to complex numbers we'll start looking at arithmetic of complex numbers and more okay thank you